All right, guys, in this video, we are going to take a look at dialogues in Angular Material. A dialog is a type of modal window that appears in front of the app content to provide information or ask for information. The usage of a dialog is very similar to that of the snack bar component we looked at in the last video. So this video should be pretty straightforward if you've understood how a snack bar works. All right, let's get started. First step, import mat dialog module and add it to the material array. Next, in the HTML, create a button that can open the dialog. So button, add the attribute mat raised button. Add a click handler, which is open dialog and then the button text is going to be open dialog. Now let's define the open dialog method. To be able to actually open the dialog, we need the mat dialog service. So import mat dialog from angular slash material. After importing, we need to inject it. So constructor, Let's go with public dialog of type mat dialog and then we can define the open dialog method. Within the body, we are going to have this dot dialog dot open and the open method on dialog accepts two parameters. The first parameter is a component and the second parameter is optional configuration. To pass in a component parameter, let's first create it. So in the terminal, we use Angular CLI and run the command ng g for generate, c for component, and the name of the component, which is going to be dialog-example. And I'm also going to skip the test files. The command creates a folder for the component and adds it to the app module. But a component that is used for a dialog also has to be included in the entry components array. So over here, dialog example component. Now we can pass this component as our parameter. So nap.component.ts, this.dialog.open, and the first parameter is going to be dialog example component. All right, let's go back to the browser and test this out. If I click on the button, a dialog pops up with the content dialog example works. And this is the HTML corresponding to our dialog example component. Right now, we just have a paragraph tag, but there are several directives meant specifically to structure the dialog content. Let's use them instead. So in VS Code, I'm going to open the file dialogexample.html and first we specify a dialog title using the mat dialog title directive. So I'm going to add an h2 tag and the directive is going to be mat dialog title. This is going to be session timeout. Next, for the content, we have mat dialog content. So this is going to be mat dialog content. And the text is going to be, you will be logged out due to inactivity. Next, for the dialog action, we have the mat dialog actions. Let's create two buttons, one to stay signed in and one to log out. So keep me logged in or log out. Now on both these buttons, if you want the click event to close the dialog, we need to add the mat dialog close directive. So on both the buttons, mat dialog close. All right, let's test this out. If you go back to the browser and I click on the button, we have the modal with the title content and the buttons. When I click the button, it closes the dialog as well. 
Now we have two buttons intended for different purposes. How would we know whether to log the user out or keep them signed in when the dialog closes on the button click? We can do that using the after closed observable, which conveniently returns a result. So back in VS Code, in the component class, first create a reference to the dialog. So let dialog ref is going to be this dot dialog dot open. Now we can subscribe to the observable. Dialog ref dot after closed dot subscribe. We get a result. And let's simply log that to the console. Dialog result is result. Finally, we assign a value to the mat dialog close directive, which is accessed as the result. So in the HTML for the dialog, on keep me logged in button, mat dialog close is going to be equal to true for the first case and false for logout. Let's go back to the browser and test this out. I'm going to open the console, click on open dialog and click on keep me logged in. You can see that it says dialog result true and click on logout. It says dialog result false. So in the subscription method, you can have the code that checks for the result. If result is equal to true, keep them signed in. And if result is equal to false, log them out. The final point to discuss with dialogues is passing in the data to the dialog component. Now there are a couple of steps, so let's go over each of them. The first step, specify the data as the second parameter to the dialog open method. So this is going to be an object. The key is going to be data, which in turn is going to be an object. I'm going to pass a name called Vishwas. So this is the second argument to the open method. Next, open the component class for the dialog example component. So dialog example component dot ts. To access the data in the dialog component, we have to use the mat dialog data injection token. So first import inject from angular slash core. Next import mat dialog data from angular slash material. And then we inject it in the constructor. So constructor is going to be at inject and we are injecting mat dialog data and then we say public data of type any. So basically we are now making the dialog component capable of receiving any type of data. Now in the dialog component HTML, we can simply interpolate the data object. So in mat dialog content, I'm going to add hi data dot name. If you now go back to the browser and click on open dialog, you can see that the content says, hi Vishwas, you will be logged out due to inactivity. So we are able to pass data to the dialog component. Now, if you want to specify height and width for the dialog, it can be passed into the configuration object. There are a bunch of properties you can use based on your requirement. So I leave that for you guys to explore. Browse the API tab in the documentation and you will find everything you need. All right, I hope you now have a good understanding of how to work with dialogues in Angular Material. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And from the next video, let's get started with data tables.